Center for the Ethiopian Educational Information and Communication Technology presents Educational Satellite Television Programs. teacher. Hello, students. Welcome to our first lesson on rational functions and their graphs. In the last lesson, we learned to solve rational equations and apply them to everyday problems. Today, we will study rational functions. We will learn to determine their domains and see what asymptotes they may possess. Are you ready, students? A rational function is a function of the form f of x equals p of x over q of x, where p of x and q of x are polynomials in x and q of x does not equal zero. A rational function is said to be in lowest terms if p of x and q of x have no common factor other than 1. Students, observe these three functions. Which are rational functions? Which are not? Please take a moment to decide, and I will be right back. Students, let's get ready. <laughs> Begin.
Time's up! Let's get back to our lesson. Hello, students. Did you manage to decide? Function A is rational. Since it is in the form of P of X over Q of X. Function B does not have the correct form, so it is not a rational function. Function C is a rational function. Notice that it is equal to y equals 2x cubed minus 9. We can conclude from this that any polynomial function is also a rational function. Now, let us learn how to determine domain. The domain of a rational function f is the set of all real numbers except the values of x that make the denominator q of x equal to zero. Here is a rational function. Do you think that you can determine its domain? Go ahead and try to do this now. Students, let's get ready. <laughs> Begin. Time's up! Let's get back to our lesson. Hello again, students. Let us see if you were able to find the correct domain for this function. Recall that the domain is the set of all real numbers except those values of x that make the denominator of q equal to zero. The simplest way to determine those values is to factorize the denominator like this. After we do this, 
the function is expressed as x minus 1 over x minus 3 times 2x plus 5. Therefore, the denominator is equal to 0 when x equals 3 or negative 5 over 2. So our domain is the set of all real numbers except 3 and negative 5 over 2. Now, let us shift our focus to the function f of x equals 1 over x. What is the domain of this function? That is correct. It is the set of all real numbers except 0. Here is the graph of the function. Based on this information, we can make the following observations. f of x approaches negative infinity as x approaches 0 on the negative side. f of x approaches infinity as x approaches 0 on the positive side. f of x approaches 0 as x approaches negative infinity. f of x approaches 0 as x approaches infinity. We have discovered the asymptotes of this function. The y-axis is called the vertical asymptote, and the x-axis is called the horizontal asymptote. Now that we know how to establish the domain and the restrictions of a function, we are ready to learn about the rules for asymptotes and holes. Please prepare to write them down. Let this be a rational function, where n is the largest exponent in the numerator, and m is the largest exponent in the denominator. The graph will have a vertical asymptote at x equals a if q of a equals 0 and p of a does not equal 0. If p of a equals q of a equals 0, the function has either a whole at x equals a or requires further simplification. If n is less than m, then the x-axis is the horizontal asymptote. If n equals m, then the line y equals a over b is a horizontal asymptote. If n equals m plus 1, the graph has an oblique asymptote and we can find it by long division. If n is greater than m plus 1, the graph has neither an oblique nor a horizontal asymptote. We have time for one more activity. Observe these two rational functions. Working with a partner, 
See if you can identify the type of asymptotes for each. Students, let's get ready. <laughs> Begin. Time's up! Let's get back to our lesson. Have you finished, students? Let us determine the correct answers together. The domain of the first function is the set of all real numbers except negative 3. Since p of negative 3 does not equal 0 and q of negative 3 
does not equal 0. x equals negative 3 is a vertical asymptote. We can also see that the degree of p of x is less than q of x. This proves that y equals 0, or the x-axis, is a horizontal asymptote. We can determine the asymptotes of the second function by factorizing the denominator. p of negative 3 does not equal 0, but q of negative 3 does. Therefore, x equals negative 3 is a vertical asymptote. p of 4 equals 0, as does q of 4. Reducing to lowest terms, we have x plus 1 over x plus 3. f of 4 equals 5 over 7, not 0. So the function has a whole at 4, 5 over 7. Did you get the same answers? Good work. That is all for this lesson. We have learned about rational functions and how to find their domains and asymptotes. Until next time, thank you, teacher. Thank you, students.